This is 7 National News and in our top story. The UAE Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, has marked the groundbreaking of the tower at Dubai Creek Harbor, the brand new icon that will be the world's tallest tower when completed in 2020. The groundbreaking was held in the presence of His Excellency Mohammed Al Gurgawi, Chairman of Dubai Holding, Mohammed Al Abbar, Chairman of Amar Properties and other dignitaries. Providing stunning 360-degree views of the city and beyond, the tower anchors the 6-square-kilometer Dubai Creek Harbor mega-development located just 10, min 10 minutes from the Dubai International Airport and will serve as a magnet for tourists and visitors from around the world. According to the designer, Spanish-Swiss architect and engineer Santiago Calatrava Baez, the design and architectural features of the tower demand unique engineering approaches that are currently being implemented on site. Meanwhile, the chairman of Amar Properties, Mohamed Al Abbad, was quoted as saying, We are pushing our boundaries in every aspect of this new master plan development, one of the largest in the world, which underlines the spirit of positivity and hope that our nation celebrates. With no similar super tall structures in the world, MR has undertaken a completely new approach to wind engineering and seismic tests, which have already been completed. Additionally, the tower will have dynamic illumination and movement lighting, as well as several green corridors that will offer pedestrian access and effortless connectivity with Dubai Creek Harbor. The Crown Prince of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, has attended the opening ceremony of the third edition of the Dubai Islamic Economy Summit. His Highness Sheikh Hamdan attended the opening ceremony along with His Highness Sheikh Maktoum bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Deputy Ruler of Dubai, and His Highness Sheikh Ahmed bin Saeed Al Maktoum, President of Dubai Civil Aviation Authority and chairman and chief executive officer of the Emirates Group and other senior government officials. During the ceremony, the Crown Prince of Dubai presented the Dubai Islamic Economic Awards to winning companies across eight different categories for their contribution towards social and economic welfare of the community, as well as initiatives and ideas for fostering prosperity and harmony. Held under the theme, Inspiring Change, the summit attracted over 3,000 decision-makers, academics and leaders from different sectors of the economy. The opening ceremony included a keynote address by Her Excellency Amina Gurib, the president of Mauritius, who highlighted the importance of global collaboration and called for a clear and long-term global strategy to properly harness the concept of Islamic finance around the world. In order to support the global growth of Islamic finance, his Excellency Mohammed Abdullah Gurgawi, the UAE Minister of Cabinet Affairs, announced the launch of the new Alcaf International Organization Initiative that is expected to devise a comprehensive system to support the global Islamic economy. The summit comes a week after the launch of the State of the Islamic Economy Report, which highlighted that the total value of Islamic economy reached $2 trillion, uh, $2 trillion by 2015 and is witnessing an annual growth of about 7%. Islamic economy is being developed and is getting developed and it's, and it's, and it's growing. Currently it stands somewhere between 2 to $3 trillion in the world and it's expected to rise up to $8 trillion by, uh, by 2022. Uh, However, if you look at the current figures right now, the global economy grows at a rate of 2.9%. Islamic economy had grown at 7%, so it's more than twice. The rate. Take, for example, Sukuk, which is the Islamic, the Sharia compliant bonds. Uh, $36 billion worth of Sukuk was issued in 2015. This year, $45 billion have been issued, which is a growth of about 25%. So this, if it's, an, if it's an indicator, it indicates that the Islamic economy is growing in the right direction and it's growing at the right speed. And in addition to that, we have many hotels that are Sharia compliant, many restaurants, many factories. We have many zones within the free zones or outside which are dedicated for halal products. So Islamic economy is, it exists, 
and it's moving in the right direction, and I'm sure that it will achieve its goals within a reasonable period of time. Several factors, both push and pull, have also constrained the development of Islamic banking in Mauritius. We know that any banking activity, the availability of liquidity enhancing financial instruments, and the development of the money market and of interbank market are important prerequisites. Islamic banks remain highly exposed to liquidity risk, and inevitably any Islamic bank should deploy its fund with conventional banks for liquidity purposes. There is also a lack of Sharia-compliant financial products. The development of Islamic banking requires the parallel development of other financial products, namely Islamic insurance takaful, Islamic asset-backed bonds, Islamic equity fund, the Sharia-compliant stocks. While efforts were underway to promote Islamic banking, not much was being done to promote Islamic finance at large. Thus, the market infrastructure for a healthy development of Islamic finance was largely absent. Alongside collaboration, speakers at the summit also highlighted the importance of supporting youth and offering opportunities that will allow them to drive the growth of the Islamic economy. His Excellency Abdel Aziz Al Ghirir, in his capacity as the board member of Dubai Islamic Economy Development Center, announced plans to develop an association of philanthropic organizations to support education and social development. It was added that at, at the present, the association is in its initial stages. However, the aim is to bring charity organizations and the private sector con to contribute towards poverty eradication through a joint donation scheme. This is strictly on the private sector. There have been a lot of, you know, in the past, our charity work has been successful and they do a great job in what they do. But there are also another line of business, which is the new modern philanthropic business, which is established by the private sector. You know, so it is this, this is, we are, uh, we are inviting all those people from the private sector to join hand where we can meet, discuss, brainstorm, compare notes, create innovative solution where it fits for us and promote the new direction of philanthropic activities. It is vital, actually. That's why uh, Abdullah Ahmad al have chosen the direction of supporting the, on the education side. We have plenty of choices, but we are focused on education. So what we do, we give scholarship to bright young Arab men and women who come from underprivileged family, give them access to the best school in the world. So in the Arab world, in the US, in Canada, in Europe, wherever those schools, we'll send those schools without any condition. Now, that's one activity. And we're also looking to explore how we can help our region here in shaping up some of our challenges. A recent report carried out by the World Economic Forum has revealed that the UAE is the third safest place in the world, with Qatar and Finland ranked second and first, respectively. Iceland and Austria were also ranked in the top five according to the Global Travel and Tourism Competitiveness Report for 2015. The report stated that the UAE has built a unique environment to attract both business and leisure travelers. From Expo 2020 Dubai to the construction of the Louvre and Guggenheim, Guggenheim, the UAE is investing in giving significant importance to the development of the travel and tourism industry. The report added that in addition, the country benefited from redirected demand as it was regarded as a safe destination with occupancy for the year increasing 8%. Further down the list was the UK, which was ranked at 63, while the US was in 73rd place below Albania, Bahrain and Kazakhstan. The report explained that when categorizing countries, the WEF took into account the costliness of common crime and violence as well as terrorism and the extent to which police services can be relied upon to provide protection from crime. Fatalities rising out of cardiovascular disease have risen to the top of the list in the UAE, leaving behind road fatality statistics, according to an international report by the medical journal The Lancet. 
The new global burden of disease, infections and risks study indicates that lifestyle disease are now a major cause of fatality and disability for the population. The report, which is based on the accumulated data of 25 years and carried out by nearly 1,800 academics across 130 countries, was conducted by the Institute of Health Metrics and Evaluation and the World Bank and published by the Lancet Journal. These statistics are reflective of the general health trends in the developed world where lifestyle diseases are a major contributor to annual death and disability figures, prompting health experts to call for a serious review of public health policies. In the UAE, heart disease fatalities have overtaken road trauma deaths, which were one of the major causes of mortality until 2014. In 2015, road fatalities accounted for 9% of total deaths, while ischemic heart disease has overtaken with nearly 21.6% of annual deaths. The other three that are among the top five causes of deaths in the UAE, according to the new study, are hemorrhage stroke, ischemic stroke, and diabetes. More than 12 million counterfeit mobile phones and mobile accessories were seized by the Department of Economic Development in Dubai between January and September this year. The counterfeit products were valued at more than 327.4 million dirhams. Quoted in local reports, DED officials said that one of the raids that led to the seizure of 5,000 counterfeit bags took place in a shop that was farming fish and shrimps in international city. Another major raid resulted in a seizure of more than 30 million dirhams worth of counterfeit mobile phones and accessories, in addition to refurbished phones. More than 26,000 phones were seized, in addition to 1.3 million fake phone accessories. According to Lt. General Lahi Khalfan Tamim, the Deputy Chairman of Police and General Security, counterfeit and fake products are a danger to society. He added that combating this crime should not only be from police and municipal authorities or economic departments, but community members also need to take part in the efforts by decreasing the demand for these items. The UAE has an intellectual property law, but raising awareness about these laws and the dangers of counterfeit items will further help with efforts to combat it. The Ministry of Economy has cracked down on car dealerships in the UAE with 2,500 vehicles replaced over the past two years for not meeting safety standards. According to local reports, Dr. Hashim al naimi the Director of Consumer Protection at the MOE, revealed that vehicles with defects were largely affected as they, were, as they included defects in airbag systems, among others. He said that the dispute committee has ensured dealerships are obligated to repair some of the defects, while in some cases they needed to provide the affected person with an alternative car. He also emphasized that the ministry will withdraw defect, defected, uh, defected cars immediately from the UAE market in coordination with the local agents. Measures are taken after reviewing the car and confirming that there were manufacturing defects. In one incident, one customer claimed that he had visited a car dealership six times to fix a defect, but the company was unable to do so. After the customer approached the committee, the authorities gave the dealership one last chance to fix the air leakage or to be forced to replace the vehicle with a new one. In a similar case, a car dealership was handed the last chance to repair a vehicle or the customer would be refunded the value of the car, which amounts to 248,000 dirhams. And finally, in the bulletin, details of the 35th edition of Sharjah International Book Fair were announced today, featuring the presence of many celebrity authors and cultural figures, including Nobel laureate, Indian child rights activist Kailash Satpathy, with over 1,400 publishers from 60 countries also participating in the fair. During a press conference held at Expo Sharjah today, representatives of Sharjah Book Authority also revealed that the United Nations Cultural Heritage Body, UNESCO, will be the guest of honor at the upcoming book fair, being held from the 2nd to the 12th of November this year. 
While announcing pencils as their logo for this year's book fair, officials stressed that they convey the wider message of having an open society and open borders, while also highlighting the need to open up our minds to different cultures. Coinciding with the Year of Reading initiative this year, over 205 publishing houses will be participating from the UAE, raising awareness about cultivating reading habits in the UAE. According to officials this year, the fair will also launch a Read to Me campaign, especially for the physically disabled and elderly, where they will have an opportunity to listen to recorded books. With more than 88,000 new titles and 11 million electronic titles on showcase for the first time, SIBF will also have many vocational programs for cultural awareness and cultural integration. Apart from many celebrity authors from the UK, US and the GCC region, the book fair will have over 1,400 1, special activities for everyone, including children, and also feature key sessions with 228 guest speakers from around the world. We accept this year to be the most strongest book fair ever been done. As you see, the, the people who are coming from everywhere in the world, this year there is uh, participation from Philippines, there is participation also from India, big participation from India. Uh, you see the, the political, the cinema actors, uh, the Nobel Prize winners, all are here. You see this year is an, exp uh, an extraordinary year for the Sharjah Book Fair. As even the international name who's here, you know, the, the author who wrote Jason Bourne, the author who wrote Star Wars, all those authors are coming to the Sharjah Book Fair. This year will be an amazing year for everybody. We have over 1,420 publisher who's attending the Sharjah Book Fair and there's more than from the, more than 60 countries over the 1,400 activities going on and by the way all the activities and everything is going on for free for the publisher for the, uh, the consumer who's attending the book fair so I send a real me small message to everyone enjoy reading enjoy the love of written word by coming to Sharjah International Book Fair